my research on cargo ship design includes a ship hull coating inspired by shark skin that improves ship efficiency while mitigating biofouling induced drag while simultaneously minimizing invasive species transport. For the past three years, I have been developing the Active Vortex Scrubber Rotor, a three-in-one cargo ship propulsion sea keeping and exhaust scrubbing device that makes wind power and sulfur regulation compliance more economically desirable. My project is a nonprofit organization that I founded, Growing Peace Inc. We utilize the power of hydroponic farming to educate, empower, and help those in need. We do this by installing hydroponic systems in areas and communities of need, providing them with fresh produce and hydroponics education. The reason why I think it's so important for the youth to get involved in climate action is not only to help the environment, but to prove that young people can make a difference in the world. And then now I have planted 20 thousands of saplings. So I have made many green belts, many forests and parks. The survival rate of the plants planted by me is more than 80 to 90 percent. Also, I am running the Eha Medicinal Garden and I have made seven Eha Medicinal Gardens in many schools and colleges and making seed balls with my green army. I believe that each child should make the environment clean and green. I started my YouTube channel during the COVID lockdown to share my love for nature and to save endangered animals. And I also have a podcast called Leo's Animal Planet, where I interview animal conservationists, charities, and young campaigners. I live in one of the most nature-deprived and polluted areas in the UK. So I've taken part in rewilding my local park and my school. My initiative is called the Community for Environmental Sustainability, also known as CFES. Since 2020, CFES has helped donate thousands of pounds of fresh produce and non-perishable food items to local food pantries and soup kitchens. So with current technology, social reform, and environmental justice, we have the power to bring hope and tangible change in so many different ways, whether it be engineering, art, or policy changes. Because if not now, then when? In 2019, upon reading an Instagram post by the UN, I learned that it takes about 10,000 litres of water to make a single pair of jeans. Over the last year and a half, I've been collecting jeans through collection drives across the country. I've converted these jeans into sleeping bags that I have then donated to homeless people across the country. It's a very, very good insulator to the point where in certain countries, denim is even used for insulating people's homes. The material is a very, very tough one, which makes it ideal for the conditions under which these people have to lead their lives. I started my journey as a change maker in 2018 with a kid's walkathon and plantation drive at the age of eight to conserve water. In 2020, I came up with two projects, Sunshine and Environment Magazine, which aims to educate environmental awareness. During the lockdown, I also tried my hands on my next project, DIY Vegetable Paper. My message to the world is, don't wait for a superhero to lead the march. Instead, be one. My research is centered around the number one killer of honeybees, the varroa mite, and the use of thymol-based essential oils and mist diffusion to combat varroa. Both my laboratory and field works are published. I am the founder and student leader of the 4-H Busy Bees Beekeeping Club. I currently serve as the New Jersey Honey Queen and travel throughout the state to educate the public on beekeeping and the honeybee industry. We are the future leaders of the world, so why should we wait until we are older when we can start creating change now? Did you know that every single year, 1.3 billion tons of unused food is discarded, yet 828 million people go hungry worldwide? My project, Homeless Heroes, is an organization focused on simultaneously addressing environmental justice and social justice by mitigating food insecurity and raising awareness about homelessness. We do this by delivering safe and nutritious food that would have otherwise been discarded from local schools to homeless shelters in need, as well as by creating and publishing educational video interviews of homeless people for students in the general public. During my middle school years, I observed that a lot of regions across the globe were facing acute freshwater shortage. Additionally, I noticed that a lot of wastewater went down the drain. 
I began brainstorming and came up with this compact, scalable solution named Bilge Vessel and Scupper Well, which can be implemented at individual homes without requiring any changes in the home plumbing network. This solution collects, filters and reuses grey water generated from different sources at home. Growing up, it was hard to accommodate my Indian vegetarian diet. At school, the lunch ladies would ask me to pick the pepperoni off a pizza or eat yet another Uncrustable. Researching the Department of Agriculture's school food policy, I was intrigued by the link of our nutrition to the highly subsidized and destructive nature of factory farming. For the past three years, I've been working as a lunch lady, surveying my classmates in the cafeteria every lunch to understand their needs. I expanded the menu options to the school district and then through lobbying for the Healthy Future Students and Earth Act to the nation, which advocated for locally sourced, freshly cooked, and plant-based options. I'm a strong believer that uniform codes offer many virtues. This includes unity, pride, and community building. Every time we moved up to the next size, my parents needed to buy me new uniforms to replace them, and over time this added to a, a substantial, meaningful amount of money and textile waste. My schoolmates were also sometimes wearing uniforms that didn't fit them properly. In 2019, I took action by launching the HOPE Uniforms Program. HOPE stands for Help Our Planet Earth. HOPE collects gently used students' school uniforms and re redistributes them back to families who need them, thereby creating an eco-friendly cycle. Placing indoor plants in classrooms is my form of environmental action because they remove toxins like formaldehyde and benzene from the air, they release oxygen that we breathe, and spread awareness about plants and their role in the ecosystem to more youths. This project aims to place a plant in every classroom in the Eanes ISD School District to teach children about the responsibility of gardening, create a bonding experience between the class as they learn to take care of their plant together, and to introduce more greenery into our public schools. I have successfully placed over 1,000 plants across classrooms, teachers' lounges, libraries, and front offices in Austin, Texas. I'm the founder of Youth Climate Save, which is the first youth-led organization that focuses on the connection between animal agriculture and climate change. And I think it is super important for youth to be involved in environmental work because this is our future that is on the line and our voices matter. A tree as big as you can reach starts with a small seed. A thousand mile journey starts with a small step. The main goal of my project is to create awareness among students about climate change and encourage each student to plant one tree. My message to everyone out there is join hands to spread climate change awareness together. My project is TerraClue, a website and sensor system that predicts ethylene output levels of crops during climate-controlled transportation and storage to recommend temperature and humidity changes, ensuring crops are delivered at the ideal ripeness while also optimizing energy usage. The website features different platforms for retailers, transportation companies, and farms to ensure that crops are delivered at a ripeness level that corresponds with current supply to minimize waste. To understand the problem I'm solving, you must know that globally, agriculture accounts for 2 billion hectares of land and uses over 70% of the global freshwater withdrawals. And because of this, produce prices around the world have increased and schools tend to go for the cheaper, less nutritious frozen alternatives. We can curb this problem by growing fresh, nutritious produce in-house. So far, my nonprofit has given free hydroponic grow kits to 49 schools across four different states. In the end, all these projects are going to collectively impact the world that we live in and our kids live in.